What does it, cousins? This is Jolyn GC, co-creator and co-producer of the Come Up series. And this is season three of Wealth Rituals. Yay, I know you guys are waiting. I was waiting too. Um, this is the first episode of 12. We're going to release one episode per month. So I hope you are ready for that. We are going to talk about one of my favorite principles. And that is, thou shall cultivate relationships of a similar frequency. Let's get into it. Relationships are at the heart of our existence. Aligning with like-minded individuals not only enhances our personal lives, but believe it or not, it also is the make or break point for our financial lives. Today, we'll discover how. One of the number one questions I get is, how do you know if this principle is operating in your life or if it's not? Well, there's about, I say maybe five or so things that will let you know. So um, take this time to ask yourself the following questions. Just ask yourself, is this true or is it, this is false? feeling isolated or unsupported in your financial endeavors? If that's true, then this principle is not operating in your life currently. Have you been facing any negative influences or discouragement from close contacts? AKA you have people hating on you like up close and personal? That's how you know this principle is not working. Um, any difficulty in finding mentorship or guidance in investment circles or like when you're trying to form your wealth building journey have you had any trouble finding like minds that may be a sign oh here's another one navigating business partnerships that lack shared vision or values if y'all ain't on the same page it's not gonna work i want you to conduct a personal relationships audit so you're just gonna evaluate the people in your circle who are you spending the most time with in your life? Who's getting the most of your bandwidth? Who's getting the most of your capacity? Who are you uh, talking on the phone with the most or FaceTiming or whatever, texting, all that? Like who is taking up the majority of your time when it comes to um, just everyday life? That's where you wanna check first. And then step two, once you know who's in your circle, maybe there's some places that need to, uh, a new person okay so sometimes that happens so you want to attend networking events uh, workshops seminars and actively seek individuals and groups that share your financial aspirations and then step three invest in mentorship yes find someone who is exactly where you want to be financially and ask that person to be your mentor to help you navigate the nuances of wealth building and then step four, cultivate a mutual respect in financial discussion. Open lines of communication ensure that a shared vision um, will take place and you will also avoid misunderstanding. So from jump, make sure your vision and your values are in writing and then make sure that both parties or however many parties are involved align with that vision. Finally, my favorite one, Celebrate your successes with that particular group because that group that you cultivate, those are the ones who will know all the trials and tribulations. Like they will know how you got there, how it started, and they will celebrate you as if it's them. Because the one thing about success and the one thing about um, celebrating those successes is really the people who you get to celebrate with. So if you are with someone and you have a hard time celebrating even the smallest of things, that's a hint that they may not be operating on a similar frequency. But the ones who, you know, let's say you found a dollar on the ground and they're just as excited as you are, or you close that new business deal and they're just as excited as you are, or they're the first to cheer you on, that's usually a sign that they're one, genuinely happy for you, and two, they have stuff in their life too going on. So just like you're celebrating, just like they're celebrating you, you'll be able to celebrate them as well. And that's what you want, mutual celebration. Surprise, I'm back. <laughs> What's up, Jolyn? Thank you for having me. Um, like, you know, I'm really, really honored to make it to one of your episodes. Uh, it's been a long road coming. Um, but let's get into some of these questions because you have some pretty uh, awesome questions when it comes to the principles here as it pertains to relationships. How do you recognize when someone is on a similar frequency as yours, especially in terms of financial goals and values? Well, you know, you've, we've heard that thing like, 
I, well, maybe not, but you know, one of the things that I've learned uh, over time is you are who you surround yourself around. So again, if you surround yourself around folks in whom which that are consistently pushing themselves and everything else, that's that's definitely going to be you. It's going to become you. And if it doesn't rub off on you, then obviously it's like there's a disconnect. You have to ask yourself, is it me or is it them? Um, some of the other traits that I notice, like that is also like not only are they pushing themselves, but also like and are they setting goals for themselves? But then also are they enforcing those things? Like those are huge for me. Uh, so final question that you have for me is uh, why is cultivating a community of similar frequency crucial uh, for achieving financial freedom? So, you know, nobody really makes it successfully by themselves. I mean, let's be honest. You know, when we think about anybody, any of the greats out there, I mean, when I look at my life and how is it that I made it you know, thus far, you know, I didn't make it by myself. You know, everybody has their tribe, everybody has their village, everybody has their community in which that they, you know, that literally where they draw strength from, um, that they also can come back to and lean on when, you know, things are tough. Um, and then at the same token that you're gonna sometimes feel the most pressure from. Um, but, you know, the, the biggest thing is the reason why it's crucial is because of the fact that it's a together thing. You know, you build wealth so that way essentially why? Not to hold it to yourself. You build wealth to make, you know, things better around you, to enrich the lives around you. Um, and a part of that is the reason why, like, like, take it like this. Why is it that we see billionaires, you know, literally, you know, throw, you know, millions or billions of dollars towards like, you know, causes and everything else. Well, the reason being is because, I mean, one can say for tax purposes, but the other person could say that the reason why they do that is because of the fact that it means something. It means something to them. It's probably going to mean something to like, if they have offspring, then it's going to be mean something to the lives of their children. And what world is is it that they're going to look at that they're going to live in, and then also just in the sense of just like just being a good human being, where it's just you know, do you want to leave the world better than the way that you found it or that it found you? Yes, I mean naturally that's ultimately what we do because of the fact that we always want to make things better, we always want to improve. There's always room for improvement, and so when you surround yourself in a community or when you get involved into a community and literally like start doing that type of work i mean it's so fulfilling it's more fulfilling than actually like the wealth itself because the wealth is more so not just the finances but it's the lives in which that you know that 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 you're entangled with um in which that you know there's stories there there's a journey there there's you know dreams that were fulfilled there was dreams that were broken in which that you ultimately came together as a community to help you know strengthen um, you know there's causes that were that were that were created and ultimately that created forth the things worth of change so you know wealth is evident in the sense of like community like you know when you build a company you know there's wealth in community as it pertains to founders when you're in a journey on in your trading journey and you've got a bunch of friends in which that you can be accountable to um, when you think about it as it pertains to like looking at it as it pertains to an entire culture seeing that the culture is actually moving forward and progressing just imagine you know waking up one day and seeing that the community that you were a part of has become so enriched that essentially it's like okay hey it just brings a smile to your face so i mean those are the simple things in which that i would look at joel in you know it's it's that simple for me in the sense of like okay hey you know it's it comes from a place of honesty it comes from a place of authenticity it comes from a place of uh transparency and then of course it comes from a place of love you know love for self love for others and then also love for the fact that you know whatever it is that you do you know your passion it follows i gotta get back to what is it that i'm doing here there's some secret stuff that i'm doing but uh have a great day peace so what did we learn from all this we've learned that relationships are pivotal wow i can't even say that word pivotal we've learned that relationships are pivotal okay and aligning with the right frequency can catalyze your financial growth this principle is not just about wealth building it really is about that interpersonal connection and making sure that all facets of your life are harmonious. And that really does start with the people who are in our circles. 
so stay tuned for our next episode. Um, we're going to explore the essence of integrity and authenticity uh, with the principle, thou shall be impeccable with thy word. So I hope you'll stay around to join us for that. Oh, and one other thing, one last thing. Wealth is not just about currency. It is about connections. There are so many proverbs from various cultures that talk about like your friends are your wealth or family is your wealth, relationships are your wealth. That is so true because that I want you to reduce that phrase that it's lonely at the top. It doesn't have to be. You can cultivate relationships of a similar frequency where you all can elevate together and then it won't be lonely at the top. See you next episode. Oh, and remember, why is my voice cracking? We're in this journey together. So you can start there with cultivating relationships. Look to your left, look to your right, and say neighbor, skate. Bye!